Welcome to Nothing Wrong with Primary Keys from the 80s. Hey, I'm Eric, and uh, I'm from the 80s. No, well, I am. I was a kid in the 80s. Anyway, um, this video is is let's call it a, a opinion piece. Um, so a while back, in some meeting with a with unknown uh, participants from from the Business Central product group, uh, a comment flew across a talk that really stuck with me, uh, and and the comment was about maybe something could be redesigned so not have these ugly '80s primary keys all over the place, um, and uh, yeah. That, that, that kind of got to me uh, and and but but let's make sure that we're on the same side when when we're talking about but uh, primary keys from the 80s um if i open customer you know uh, that, that's it's a good example um you know we have a customer number which can be a, a, of course not only digits but can be anything 20 characters that's a primary key from the eighties. Very convenient. Uh, sometimes people put meaning into a, a, a number like that. Maybe you should. Maybe you shouldn't. Um, maybe you have a, a system for assigning them. You have a system for recognizing the the difference between a customer number and a vendor number or an item number or stuff like that. Um, so that's a primary key from the eighties. Um, if we scroll down and, and take a look at at posting in this case, you know, we got a general business posting group called domestic. That's you know that's the code, and then we have a description. That so that's another primary key from the eighties, uh, and um, it's it's easy to read. Uh, it's easy to to understand. It's short. It's easy to type. Um, we got the same thing with if we go to you know post customer posting group or discount groups or tax area code and you know there's there's a whole bunch of them um and if we go to select from full list and then we go to you know to, to set up here then we are we're mixing a creating a matrix of two different primary keys from the 80s uh and we can see here that in this case we are mixing domestic with uh, freight and manufacturing and, and so on. So it's it's easy to read, it's easy to understand. So those are primary keys from the eighties. Um, let me show a couple of examples that are not primary keys from the eighties. Uh, uh, let me show you one because. And this is this is very strange in in Business Central, uh, but um, nonetheless we actually have it. Let me go to items. So this is a primary key from uh, I would say the early two thousands. Uh, this is a a I'm I'm gonna say this is a MySQL inspired primary key. So we have an item here, and uh, go away all the cheating tools. And behind me, let's see if I can make this. You know, we have item attributes here, right, right here, um, and we can see that this is color, depth, width, and if I, if I go and and say edit on this, I get into a page that looks like this. So we got an attribute which is is a is, is clearly does not look like a primary key from the eighties. So this is color, value black, and that's all good. Um, and if I do something else here, we can see we get the same thing. So how do I add a new attribute? So I type in name, so let's do color. So now I have a new attribute. I could either go, I'll just go with text here. So now I have a new attribute called color. So let me create another one because I already have one, the UK spelling and now I have the US spelling. Uh, so let me create a Danish called Fave. Um, 
Or maybe I want to create even one more called color. The item attribute with the name color already exists. Okay. Uh, but if we go look at this table, what we'll see here. So this is table 750, no, 7500. So let's actually go look at the source code for that one. I think I got it. Item attribute. I got it right here. What we can see here that, huh, there's a file called ID with is an integer with auto increment. And if we go down and, and find the keys on this one, we can see that that is the primary key. But when I tried to create two that was named color, spelled the same anyway, um, that would be name, which now has some you know custom code that goes in and you know tries to see if there's something else that has the same uh, same name already uh, so so this is the primary key here is suddenly so the id of an attribute is kind of this so this one is oh you can't see because of my big head but uh, so this is seven, this is eight, this is three, and so on. Because it's auto incremented, meaning that let's say let's say you had two companies, and you wanted to create, you know, you you shared some items between the companies, and you need to create the same attributes. So unless you create them in the same order. They would get different IDs. So suddenly, if you want to do reporting and you get ID seven in one company, ID four in the other company, it, it's a total mess. Um, and if this was done with primary keys from the eighties, we would not have this problem. Yeah, sure. Maybe this page would have an extra column, but that's kind of it. That's the only change it would, would have it will have a, a code and name and time they will look like hundreds of tables in the system uh, elsewhere um, so very weird decision not to use primary keys from the 80s probably somebody probably thought it looked like when well at least I, I'm sticking to the comment I heard uh, saying that it, they are they're not nice looking um, but they're very, very effective. And, and this item attributes would have been a so much better solution. It was actually coded up to the standard of the rest of Business Central. Um, let me give you another example. Hey, we got examples here. So let me go to job queue. Uh, and we can see that we have some jobs here. So if I create a new job, it says report zero, so I will go with report 110, custom labels. So now I created a job, but there's report customer labels. Let me do another one, report 110. So now I have two jobs that from a UI perspective looks the same. So I have these two reports and which one is which? Well, this one says report 110 custom labels and it goes to the next one. This one says report 110 custom labels. So from a UI perspective, there's no different from when a user looks at this, there's no difference between those two, uh, two jobs. Um, but behind the scene, Let's actually go back here and then do it up. So we will take job queue entry, right? Behind the scene, we can see that there is a primary key. It's a GUID. Um, and if I go down and look at the keys, oh man, there's a lot of code on this table. Field, 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 field. Come on. Wow, where are we? There. We can see that that is the primary key. 
So, so somewhere there's code that is, let's see, on insert. If there's no GUID, then we will add a GUID. Uh, but there's no way for user to, you know, like one admin to another admin say, that specific job we need to do something about, or this is this job that failed. If, if we're looking at a, at a, a email log or, or something like that, because from the, what then the user is looking at this, it is the same if they look the same. Um, so this would have been way better with a primary key from the 80s. Uh, so each job would have a unique ID that is recognizable from a user that is, you know, you can put in an email or stuff like that. Um, anyway. So, sorry if this is turning into 11 minutes of me uh, saying that lots of stuff from the 80s are way better than the new. And it's not because I have several computers behind me from the 80s or that it clearly was the decade with the best music. Uh, that's a scientific thing. Uh, anyway, I think Business Central nav navigation navigator actually got this pretty uh, dead on that that these codes they might look ugly but they're they have a very high degree of usability in the user group the software is designed for um and um i know that there are other ways of uh, other software that out there that does it differently uh, but I think it's pretty good. I don't think th there's need to change this radically. I, I think uh, there's other other things that could be more beneficial to look at than ugly primary keys from the eighties. Anyway, uh, do check out this video. I will not mention the eighties in this in this one. I promise. Uh, take care. See you there. Bye.